Thanks for taking the time, David, to talk to me. Good pleasure. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you got the role in the bubble. Well, I've known Judd for for uh, ever. I mean, when I did when I did Larry Sanders, when I met Gary Shandling, uh, Judd was twenty three year old. I think uh, his first job was writing for for uh, Sanders, and uh, met him then. And then, um, and I can't remember the year I did it, but I did a movie with Jay Kaslin called The TV Set, and in that I basically played Judd, and because uh, it was it was loosely based on Judd's and Jake's experience doing Freaks and Geeks, and um, in fact, the, the the day we did the table read uh, before shooting that movie was the night of the premiere of the Forty Year Old Virgin. And so it was very weird because, uh, you know, in the morning, Judd was at the table, I think it was one of the producers. And uh, I was just playing this guy named Judd Apatow that nobody knew. And then I went to the four-year-old virgin and it was like a revolution. It was like, oh my God, this is comedy now. You know, it was the fr it was the first like hard R, you know, raunchy comedy. And I was like, oh, you know, Judd is at the forefront of something. And then he became, you know, a name, uh, an adjective, uh, a godfather of comedy. And uh, I'm glad I played him before anybody uh, really cared what, what he sounded or looked like. And um, so, you know, we've been kind of like intersecting just throughout the years. And uh, he called and said he wanted me to do this. And there was, there was like, it was like an ensemble of like six leads and I'd be playing an actor and, you know, it's never my like dream to play an actor, you know, because I think, you know, we all do that a number of times. But, you know, I really dug the idea and, you know, to be able to do it during the pandemic, kind of about what it's like to, to work during the pandemic. And uh, I, I, I just always wanted to get into Judd's uh, comedic world, you know, in that way. And so I was happy, happy to, to finally, you know, after all these years, make an entrance. What was it like to work with him, especially after playing essentially him? <laughs> well, it's interesting because uh, I didn't, I'd never worked quite this way. It's very improvisational. I mean, I've, I've improv, uh, but I haven't improv like on a movie set quite like that. And a lot of it is, is, is Judd, Judd's on a microphone behind the monitor and he's, he's pitching, he's, he's throwing out, uh, lines he's throwing out stories I mean you know you'll hear something you'll be cameras rolling you're on set I'm looking across at Leslie Mann and we're doing a scene and Judd will yell something that I've never heard before about my character or anything like oh I, I didn't know I did that but now I'm gonna say it you know like when we were saying uh, I said I'm sorry I fucked your agent and your manager <laughs> and your lawyer you know it's like because <laughs> just like and your lawyer and your lawyer <laughs> I was like, oh, you're a divorce lawyer, and, and you're a divorce lawyer. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so there's, it's interesting because I think like looking now, now when I look at some of Judd's work, you can see the kind of self surprise that people have in his uh, in his movies, and and now I get it now because sometimes they're saying things that they they didn't know about their character, and there's a kind of like energy about that that's cool and funny. Because, you know, it's trite. The writers always say, you know, if you surprise yourself, you'll surprise the audience. And in some ways, Judd's kind of getting at that sometimes where he's like surprising the actor who then surprises him or herself in the moment. And that can, that can create a kind of interesting energy. It did seem to create um that energy on set at least i mean you guys had such a great um chemistry as cast was that due to the a lot of the improving or did you guys get a chance to to kind of bond beforehand or well <clears throat> we had i forget how long we quarantined but maybe two weeks alone but that was kind of zooming with the other cast members and then after we started shooting, we were pretty much the only company that we had because we would continue to quarantine as best we could. And we were most of us staying at the same kind of complex in, in London. 
So we did spend a lot of time together. I didn't know anybody before that. And I became really, really friendly with, with some of the cast. And uh, like Pedro Pascal is, is a good friend. I, I loved Fred and Keegan and uh, Leslie I knew, but Leslie was kind of off with Judd in, 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 that, in, in their world. Um, so uh, it, was, it was a part of, I, I think the reality of quarantining, the reality of also we had all these dance rehearsals, which was weird, you know, because like, we had a lot of dance rehearsals because none of us are da dancers. Maybe, maybe Iris was, you know, she's really good. She, maybe she danced a little. I want to say she danced a little because she was so much better than, than me. But uh, it was, it was nerve wracking because, you know, Joe was like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's not the kind of funny where you're bad at it. It's the kind of funny that you're good at it. And I was like, shit, I'm way better at the kind of funny where I'm bad at something. <laughs> we had a lot of, of dance rehearsals and we'd hang out. I mean, that, and that was for the entire cast, you know, 10 people, you know, and, and, and these uh, people like Veer and, and, and Samson uh, uh, that, that are just so talented and, and, and Maria, you know, that we never, I never would have spent that kind of time with them off of set, you know, I just wouldn't have. And it was kind of cool to be able to do that. Now that you've done some of this TikTok dancing, any chance you want to start a TikTok of your own? No, I, and I don't think there's any demand for that either. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of thought I was a good dancer until I until I had to dance. Uh, it was it was it was one of my last remaining delusions as a as as a human being. Like, yeah, I could have been a dancer you know, if only I had been trained. I was like, no, not true, not true. <laughs> How did the um, movie compare with your real uh, pandemic working experience? Like you were uh, doing cocaine off of Keegan's uh, head for real. I mean, it's well. the Yeah, I mean, you know, the idea of, of snoring coke off Keegan's head is it's probably, uh, it's probably frowned upon by the CDC, I would imagine, that that kind of behavior during a pandemic uh, is frowned upon. But, um, you know, when we're in the bubble, we're all trusting that we're we're COVID free at that particular moment, right? So, um, you know, aside from the crazy shenanigans we get up to, the actual like nuts and bolts of showing up in a mask, you know, getting your makeup done by people in masks, going to set, having certain designated areas where you you can be and where nobody else can be, that's all you know, that's all Netflix protocol and probably general protocol at this point. And it's amazing how normalized it becomes. You know, at first you think, oh God, no way. I can't, I can't work like this. This you know, can't be, can't feel free. Can't feel loose. Well, you do. And you just do. So let's see your sweet eyes then. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is, that, is that what Harry does? He's like, <laughs> yeah. That kid is so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all of them. I mean, Judd, Judd is such a nurturer and a, a, a uh, identifier of talent, you know, and he's so enthusiastic about young talent, you know, and I'm just uh, I'm very impressed by his uh, generosity and his uh, interest, you know, and, and uh, in, in all that. And, and, so many of those, the British actors, uh, even, even the guys that were playing the the the, Mo, the Mopo uh, uh, dinosaurs, you know, the kind of Greek chorus of, of dinosaurs. Those guys, super talented. Like everybody that everybody that Judd would have there, that you know, I might not know. I would always go, "Wow, that kid!" Or even the, like the woman that came to play the script supervisor. And again, I don't know her name, but she had one or two lines. It was great. You know, so switching gears a little bit, um, you just released your newest album a few months ago. Any plans on touring in support of that? Yeah, I'd like to. You know, we're just kind of waiting to see what what is uh, what is doable. You know, I just I played a festival in Tampa last weekend, so that was the first time I played in front of an audience since you know back then, since two and a half years, and and uh, since the before times. Yeah, before times. That was an outdoor audience. And, you know, as, as 
I, I feel as safe as, as we can be now. I think, you know, everything is constantly changing. Obviously numbers are going up, but the virus, this, this particular iteration of the virus seems to be less, way less lethal, even way less, you know, uh, of a disturbance in your life, more, more like a cold, the kind of lies that people told them in the beginning in order to stay open uh, is now true. So seems to be true that could you know that could morph at any time you know who knows but um you know i tend to play i don't play like open air sixty thousand seat theaters you know uh, not because i don't want to but i i can't so i play two thousand three thousand rooms enclosed uh you know that you would say yeah that's a super spreader so we don't know i mean i i sang um i, I sang uh I sing a John Legend song in this movie, uh, uh, You People, that uh, I just did with the Kenya Barris, the director. And that was also Netflix. And uh, in order to, to do that, and this is only, this was only uh, last December, right? It's not that long ago. Uh, I had to get to set early, test twice two hours apart and then when I sang uh, the room had to be empty it was like they pressed the camera and they run away and I and I did it a few times just all by myself with no no other actors there and and then uh, and then they had to wipe everything down and then we come in and then when the actors are there I could only mouth it I couldn't expel aerosol so that's how, even just a few months ago, that's how you sing in a movie. Um, wow. So, I, yeah, I was like, and I was like, this sucks. This is so, because I really, I, it would have been funny if uh, I had their real reactions while I was singing, but no, I couldn't actually sing in front of people and, uh, and, and adhere to the protocols of, of movie making right now. Any updates on the Truly Like Lightning show for Showtime? No, no. I mean, we're kind of in a holding pattern there. Um, uh, it's still like my main ambition and goal is to is to bring that to a screen. Um, it's tough one though. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a heavy it's a heavy story, but I think it's I think it's really. Uh, entertaining too you know ultimately but but when you when you outline the bare bones of it it's like oh that's super heavy i don't know i don't know i want to see that you know people are all people are all uh have theories about the kind of entertainment that people want to see during a pandemic but i i never i never think that people change you know i think people like what they like uh regardless of whether it's a pandemic and I think people like to say, oh, you know, I, all I want to see is this because I don't want to deal with reality. But until something really good comes along, I'm like, oh, finally, finally, at least I'm joking about it. Um, is there anything else that you're working on right now that you can talk I about? I just finished a movie called The Estate with Tony Collette, Anna Far Farris, and um, Rosemary DeWitt and Ron Livingston. So I think it's really funny. And uh, Kayla Monterosa, who was in Curb Your Enthusiasm, it's just terrific. Uh, Pet Cemetery, I did a, I did that. It's like a, the, the prequel to all the pets. And uh, written and directed by a really talented young woman named Lindsay Beer, who I think is going to be a force to be reckoned with. So I, I, I think that's, that's going to turn out really well. And um, can I ask who you played in that in Pet Cemetery? I play uh, Bill Baderman, the, the father of, uh, of, of a young man. That, that I'm like the instigator of the whole, the whole damn thing. You know? But, you know, it's a very uh, at the heart of that story, you know, for whatever, whatever iterations it's gone through and for whatever horror Stephen King does, it's really it's a, it's a it's a story about parental love, you know, and mourning and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, I can really relate to the themes underneath it. So I was happy to, 
to play that. Okay, well, I think I should probably let you go because I think I've exceeded our time. Okay. Um, but thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking to me and uh, I loved the bubble and um, yeah. <laughs> thank you for having my books. You can rotate them out of, out of the way now. I know you're putting <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you.